Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Vitus. My name is Kate Maisie, and I am your cantor for today. Today's Mass is being offered for Dolores and Jim McFarland. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, and our celebrant for this Mass is Father Mick. Dear friends in Christ, on the second Sunday of Advent, our attention is turned to the great figure of John the Baptist. John calls us out to the desert, proclaiming a time of repentance and renewal, for the day of the Lord is at hand. As we light two candles on the Advent wreath, let us prepare ourselves through prayer and penance. Let us open a way for the Lord to come into our hearts. Only at this Mass and at the 9 a.m. Mass, there will be a hoagie sale for the Catholic Heart Work Camp. The sacrament of anointing of the sick will be offered after all of the Masses. Raffle tickets for the month of January for Friends of Catholic Education will be sold after all Masses this weekend. They make great stocking stuffers. This Friday, over 30 of our children will perform the Christmas pageant at St. Vitus Church at 7 p.m. Please try and come and enjoy the efforts of all of the people involved. Now let us stand and pray together the St. Michael prayer found in the inside back cover of your hymnal. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please remain standing and help sing our opening hymn number 398, Prepare, Prepare. And we'll just keep repeating the Prepare, Prepare. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Here we are already, the second week of Advent. We only have three weeks, really, because next week's 
the third, and then the fourth week of Advent is actually Christmas Eve. So we lose a whole week in preparing for our Savior's birth, a rebirth in our minds, in our hearts, our souls, our families, our community, our parish. For the times we have not been open to his rebirth, we ask his pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to save us from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father, the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merciful love, 
Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth. And justice A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. The Lord, open our minds, understand his words, or let us may proclaim it in our hearts that we might live it. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locust and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So the prophet Ezekiel has a vision which is shared by St. John the Evangelist who writes the book of Revelation. And they both have a vision of four strange creatures. The one is the image of this creature with wings and all, and he has the face of a man. Another is a lion, and he also has wings. A third is an ox, and the fourth is an eagle. From the second century, Christians believe these three strange creatures symbolize the four Gospels. Now, if we were having a quiz, we'd say, who could name the Gospel and match it up with the image? St. Jerome it does the best job in pointing out which one, and it, it's helpful to for remembering. Okay, so Matthew's gospel begins with the genealogy, which is a nightmare to have to read because of all the different names. And every time I've had to read it as a deacon and a priest, I've butchered it terribly. But St. Jerome says he is the image that is the face of the man because he starts with the genealogy of Jesus. Then we have the lion. Now if you listened, the Gospel of Mark, we read from Mark in this new liturgical year of B, which is the Gospel of Mark primarily. And we have today the beginning of that Gospel. Now St. Jerome says, he's the lion because he begins his gospel with John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was like a roaring lion, calling people to repentance. Then, of course, we have St. Luke, who is comparable to the ox, because he begins his gospel with Zechariah, who would be the father of John the Baptist, and Zechariah was a priest, and Zechariah offered sacrifice. So the ox would be the symbol for St. Luke, which leaves us St. John as the eagle. And of course, the eagle is one that soars very high and can see what no one else can see. And John's Gospel is different than the other three synoptic or similar Gospels. And so he is rightfully the image of the eagle. So when Mark begins his Gospel saying, this is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
we, we just gloss right over that. But many biblical scholars and historians, and particularly a Bishop Barron, if you listen to him, he says these were fighting words. This was very political. This is why they were being put to death. Because Mark is saying, Jesus is the Son of God, not Caesar, not the powerful Rome. In fact, Rome put him to death, but God raised him from the dead. Caesar referred to himself as the Son of God. Augustus Caesar, who was Caesar's adopted son, and who was ruling at the time Christ was born, was known as the Son of God. When Mark says the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that is an affront to the power of Rome. He begins his gospel calling us to prepare. You, know, you stop and think about it. We spend more time preparing for something than actually doing it. In which verse, I know there's at least another pilot in the room. There might be a few others. But if you are planning a flight in an airplane, you'll spend more time, in some cases, preparing the flight than actually flying it. To check the weather, you have to do your course, you have to file your plan, you have to have a alternate airport if you run into bad weather. But all these things you have to do before you take off. What about a career? How many years a person spends preparing for a profession or a trade? And if the preparation is lacking, then you're looking at a disaster for a career. Preparation before some of the most important events in our life, like marriage. People who date for a very short time hastily tie the knot. Usually, they don't tie it very well. And if you look at the sacred scripture, the Old Testament and the part of the gospel leading up to our salvation is far bigger part of the book than the end of the story. In the gospels, we lead up to Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection and poof, after the resurrection in the gospels, there's only a page or two. Then, of course, we get into the Acts of the Apostles, and that tells a little more of the story. But it's not nearly as long as the Gospels. Now, look at your life and my life, and you consider that our time in this world is what? Ultimately, a preparation for our next life. Our whole life here is preparation for eternity. But how much do we really prepare for eternity? We prepare for everything else much more diligently, if we're honest. Prepare for a child to be born, Prepare for Christmas celebration. Out trying to do all the things we have to do. But our whole life is a preparation for the next life. If we really pay attention to it. 
What is the best way to prepare is to get to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To turn away from sin and that which isn't him and cling to him who is our hope and our salvation. There is the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. Certainly the waters of baptism. I had a little baptism before Mass. And there is the anointing of the sick. And if we're honest, we're all sick. I've been called sick many times, mostly by my family. But there's always something that you and I need to be healed of. And if you notice in the scripture, every time Jesus cured someone of a physical ailment, he said, your sins are forgiven. Because spiritual health care is the most important health care. And if we're spiritually sound, we're usually physically sound, or we can endure whatever physical ailment we may have. You ever notice those people who are extremely happy and yet physically they have terrible disease or issues, yet they're happy. And some people who recover from terrible illness like cancer, oftentimes they recover when others don't and doctors will even admit it's because of their good attitude. They prayed. They had others pray for them. So, tonight is a special gift to all of you, the opportunity to receive the gift of the sacrament of the sick. So I will say the prayer over all who wish to receive that sacrament and just be open to it in your heart. And then immediately following Mass during the final song, if you come forward like you would for Holy Communion, I will anoint your forehead and the palms of your hands with the blessed oil. And those of you who aren't mobile and we bring communion to you, just stay where you are, and I'll come to you quickly and do the same for you. So, sacrament comes to us from the letter of St. James in the New Testament. He says, if there are any ill among you, let them call for the priests of the church. Let them anoint them in the name of the Lord. This prayer made in faith will save the sick person, and if they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven them. So I entrust all of you, my brothers and sisters, to the power and strength of Jesus Christ. He might ease your suffering and grant you health and salvation. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, you sent your Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, to rescue your people from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the splendor of the kingdom of light. We pray for our brothers and sisters that you will bring them healing of mind, body, and soul, strengthen them and protect them. May Our Lady embrace you with her love and compassion, and may you all be aware of her Son with you to lead you, guide you, and sustain you unto eternal life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial but the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge and the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord Jesus, you came to save us from our sins. Open our minds and our hearts to your healing that we may truly serve you in this life and prepare to be with you for all eternity as we place before you our cares and concerns. For the renewal of the church, that the Lord may sanctify her during this holy season of Advent, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that the Lord may guide the minds of those who govern in order to promote the common good and assure justice for all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that the Lord may draw us together in and through the sacramental life of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greater respect and hospitality to be shown toward people with disabilities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase to vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life, and that all the faithful may work to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in charity and truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beloved dead, Dolores and Jim McFarland, may they forever praise the Lord in heaven with all the angels and saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own attentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now together pray our parish prayer Lord Jesus, you told us where your treasure is. There your heart is also. The parish of Holy Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom. Give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray for us. Amen. As we continue this celebration of God's love for us, please join in singing our offertory hymn, Come, O Long Expected. Jesus, number 403.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that we ourselves in these gifts we offer be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings and sense. We have no merit to plead our cause. Come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ who saves us. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and opened for us the way to salvation. By opening his arms on the cross, he put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. And that he might come again in glory he causes us to prepare that we may be watchful for that day so that we might inherit the great promises in which we dare to hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, your apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray in the words of Mary's Son, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Amen. We share a sign of his peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 396, Comfort My People, number 396.
And I always bless our little ones. Okay, and then immediately after the closing prayer, I will run around the church to those of you who can't run around, and I will anoint you first, and then I'll come down here to the center, and anyone who wants to come forward for the anointing, if you would hold out the palms of your hands, and I'll anoint your forehead and the palms of your hands, and then you may go, and you'll all be sinless, huh? You laugh. Let us pray. Replenished by this food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking of this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and lay hold of the things of heaven, for they are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 421, Savior of the Nations Come, number 421.